Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Chris sent me a note about an insurance adjuster in the news, and this is the kind of thing that'll make you wonder. Uh, if you ever filed a claim and dealt with an insurance adjuster, you know that from time to time, they don't like to pay claims. However, this guy was paying claims willy-nilly when it came to um, paying himself. So this is from insurancebusinessmag.com. Insurance claims adjuster sentenced to prison time. So he got caught, and he's going to prison. And he worked as a claims adjuster for one of the major insurance companies between 2015 and 2019. Now, John Lynn Cueto wrote this, and the man's from Raleigh. He's been sentenced to more than a year in prison after he pleaded guilty to accusations of wire fraud and money laundering. Along with his prison time, he's also ordered to complete three years of supervised release and to pay back restitution in the amount of eight hundred. dollars and $60,000, $860,000. The man's 51 years old, according to federal prosecutors, and a resident of Shady Spring, Shady Spring. He admitted to issuing fraudulent payments as an insurance claims adjuster and using the money to fund a different business that he owns. So they say that he owned a business, was working as an adjuster, and was cutting checks from the insurance company that he somehow got control of to fund his other business. So... He worked as a claims adjuster for the insurance company for about four or five years. He was routinely assigned claims to investigate when the insurance customers filed claims under their policies. Uh, The company had him uh, with the authority to investigate assigned claims as well as determine coverage and work with insured customers and other stakeholders to resolve the disputed claims. Among other things, he was entrusted with issuing settlement check payments to policyholders and businesses. So they gave him some authority to issue checks. That's always a dangerous thing. And before you give somebody that authority, you might want to ask yourself, uh, are they good for it? And will there be any oversight? Federal prosecutors said the man admitted to authorizing and issuing a check, for example, back in 2018 uh, for more than $15,000. And it was from the insurance company to a business that uh, was a cleaning service, apparently. The check issued was allegedly for work performed and thus deposited into the cleaning company's bank account. And the man admitted it was a fraudulent uh, check as the cleaning company had completed no work to justify the payment. So he then he admitted that he had a business relationship with the cleaning company and was an authorized signer on that business's bank account. So it appears that he's cutting those checks to himself. Uh, he admitted to authorizing and issuing at least 68 fraudulent claim payment checks on behalf of the insurance company, which added up to about $850,000, many of them to that cleaning company, uh, between January of 18 and June of 19. Uh, He had attempted to cover the fraudulent nature of some of the checks by creating fraudulent receipts and documents. He also used the fraudulent claims payments deposited in uh, the cleaning bank account to fund a power sports company, which he owned and operated. So the investigations revealed that he routinely wrote checks from the cleaning company's bank account to the power sports company, including payments for employees and purchasing inventory, as well as paying his recurring bills. So he also admitted that in December of 2018, he wired more than $100,000 from the cleaning company's bank account to a North Carolina business as a fraudulent transaction to prepay for tractors intended for another company that he had, apparently, that sold tractors. (laughs) Tractors. <laughs> they also said he attempted to conceal his scheme from investigators by falsely stating that he had no financial interest in the cleaning company. They said he'd also provided the FBI special agents with a detailed false story about his fraudulent story. Uh, and then here's where it gets ugly. And this is the sentence that, as an attorney, actually gave me the willies. In response to a federal grand jury subpoena, he created and submitted a fictitious contract to supposedly show that the cleaning company was sold to a fictitious company otherwise prior to all of this happening. And so the allegation is that he got hit with a subpoena from a grand jury and he submitted false documents to the grand jury. And we've said this before, that when you're being investigated, quite often things you say in the investigation can screw you up worse than what you've done that you're being investigated for. And so when they catch you, if they catch you making false statements during an investigation, that can often be like the tip of the spear. That can often be the, the, the first thing they go after because it's the easiest thing to prove. So if the grand jury looks at these documents along with the prosecutor and they go, hey, 
These documents are fake. They were submitted to us pursuant to a subpoena that we issued lawfully. That's a problem. But of course, then they know, well, there's the smoke. Now let's go dig out the fire. And so the fact that he submitted a fictitious contract to show that this cleaning company had been sold to another company uh, would show there's something going on there. And they unraveled this thing and discovered that's what's going on. So the man's a claims adjuster, and he authorized what they believe to be about $860,000 in checks that, in essence, went to himself through these different corporations that he had. And they think he was using some of the money simply trying to fund another business that wasn't quite doing well. Uh, so it's a bizarre story. Anyone who's ever dealt with an insurance company knows that getting these claims adjusters to agree to pay claims can sometimes be quite difficult. <laughs> Ironically, when they're paying their own claims, they're just paying them willy-nilly. So, you know, if you or I had been among checks that were, you know, this guy was supposed to authorize, uh, that guy would have put a ton of work into seeing if he could avoid paying. And so here he is cutting the checks and authorizing them for $850,000. Uh, and again, it's all money that's in essence going from the insurance company to a company that he controls to fund another company that's trying to get started. Bizarre case, bizarre case, but it just happened. And I don't know if this will make the actual news, like, you know, mainstream media and so on, but this was picked up by uh, an insurance uh, inside type magazine insurancebusinessmag.com. And of course, people in the insurance industry will be fascinated by this. I can tell you, uh, and I gotta be real careful about this, but there was a situation years ago that I became aware of where one of the people I dealt with at one of the um, major auto manufacturers had authority to write checks up to a certain amount before they were gonna get scrutinized or double-checked by somebody else. And um, my understanding was that that person later got in trouble for writing checks that were just below the amount where they'd get scrutinized and then working out deals with other people saying, if I cut this check in such a way that you can cash it, will you split it with me? And sooner or later, someone's going to come along and double check your math. At a big corporation, if you're cutting checks, even if they say, oh, you have the authority to cut this check, here's a rubber stamp for a signature and just issue the checks as long as you're below this amount of money, they'll get approved. Somebody somewhere, somewhere down the line is going to say, okay, let's double check to see what kind of checks this person wrote. Oh, you wrote a whole bunch of checks where well, there's no documentation to support why those checks are going out. Maybe we should audit the situation. And next thing you know, so I can tell you that the person that I was aware of who had that ability to write those checks was not working at that company uh, a little while later. And due to the timing of it, made me wonder if those two were connected. But that's about all I can tell you at this time. <laughs> Thank you for your interest. But Chris, thanks for sending the story along. From insurancebusinessmag.com, insurance claims adjuster sentenced to prison time. Prison time. He works as a claims adjuster for an insurance company between 2015 and 2019. And Jonathan Cueto wrote that. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Running after you is like chasing the clouds.